Good evening, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. So a lot of you know who uh, follow me on this channel know that I uh, read a lot of Federal Reserve speeches and some past speeches. And one of them was a Ben Bernanke speech from 2002 talking about credible threats. And he described credible threat as a, well, with the story of a guy who invented a gold machine. And with this gold machine, he would be able to produce as much gold at will for pretty much zero cost, right? And the moment that the information about this gold machine hit the markets, the price of gold would immediately plummet, even before the guy produced a single ounce of gold. Right, just the credible threat alone would be enough to move markets. So when I came across this, uh, I think it's a speech coming out of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, and it's titled "When Quantitative Tightening Is Not Quantitative Tightening," and in there there is a section called "The Signaling Effects from QE." Listen to this. However, QE was not implemented in ordinary times, and the actual effects of QE appear to be far from neutral. There are many ideas about why this may be so. A leading theory is that QE did not have direct effects on the economy, but did send a credible signal about how long the FOMC intended to keep the policy rate near zero. One set of estimates documenting important signaling effects from QE comes from a 2014 paper by Michael Bauer and Glenn Rudebusch. They estimated the effects of QE announcements on forward rates and found that a, a sizable part of the effect was due to expectations for future policy. The signaling argument seems to work reasonably well if the policy rate is near zero. Well, isn't that something? No wonder why Cudlow wants those interest rates so low, right? It's not to stimulate the economy when the economy is rocking and rolling and unemployment is as low as it is. It's because the leading theory is that QE did not have a direct effect on the economy, but did send a credible signal about how long the FOMC intended to keep the policy rates near zero. And the signaling argument seems to work reasonably well if the policy rate is near zero. So that's what I see. It's not so much about stimulating the economy, it's about holding on to some credible threats. Anyway, I'll leave a link for this down in the descriptions. Uneducated economists, you guys let me know.